So how it really works is that the unconscious mind is obviously unconscious to you. You don't have any of it. What you do is you approximate it with the functions in your ego, and then you pretend you have it, which is actually good to do for development in some ways, if you can admit you don't have the function. But it's, it's better to realize you don't have it. It's just better in every way to, to understand it this way, not just for yourself, but for everybody else too. The amount of forgiveness you'll have for the world when you get this will be a lot better and honest too and good the way it'll go out. So there's a general box theory. In one of his older videos, probably more than one, and he might have used different words, but he showed that a thought has a judgment element to it and a perception to it. In either order, you know, you can judge a perception, you can perceive a judgment. One's the beginning, one's the end. You had a thought. There you go, right? If it's in your conscious mind all the way, the perception is telling you what it is that you're judging. And the judgment is telling you how you judge it, what you feel about it, what you think about it, whatever. When those are all conscious, you can have real discussions that are like healthy, scoped out properly, targeted towards things. You can take criticism, go back and forth. It's really easy to have like genuine, real, honest, full discussions in that kind of a space. Really easy to do that. And they're healthy and they're good. Every element is on the table when they're in your conscious. When they're in your unconscious, you don't even know you're doing thinking because your unconscious mind is not conscious to you. But I found along the lines that map out the same way the dimensionalities do. And it's not because of dimensionalities, it just map out the same way. The four dimensional function in your unconscious can't talk directly in some fully verbal, communicatory, revelatory way to the function in your ego, but it can affect it by like a pushing kind of a thing. We'll call it that. It doesn't give any information. If it's a judging function, you don't get to know the judgment it had. It just pushes on the perceiving function it's linked to. Receiving functions push on the judging functions and you don't get to know the perception. It's crazy. So as a kid, I was an ISFJ. Uh, I know I've been typed 11, no, 12 now of the 16 personality types, but I'm an ISFJ. We're chameleons. Um, a lot of the time, something would happen where my FI, unbeknownst to me, would push on my SI. You might ask, how do I know about this? How, how can I look back and know that's what was happening? Well, I know it happened because I'd be near an adult, like driving in the passenger seat with my mom or at a friend's house, and their parents were there, usually their mom, and they go, what's wrong? And it's like, this caught me so off guard every time because literally nothing in my conscious mind was wrong. I had no what's wrong kind of thoughts. I wasn't bothered by anybody. There was literally nothing there I could say. Because the judgment of whatever it was that was wrong came from my unconscious mind, from my FI, which then just pushed my SI. I was like, hey, 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 hey. And I didn't even know it was pushing it, of course, but it made me look uncomfortable. Socionics loves like SI is about, are your clothes comfortable? Is the AC on? Did you eat enough? Did you eat too much? You know, but this is an emotional discomfort. And I genuinely had it. And I know I did because every friend of mine's parents in the universe can't be wrong. And my mom. And other people too, around my age as I grew older. It was a push. It was a push. And it made my SI do the uncomfortable looking face. Now, it really matters. If you're an ISFJ, you know how you listen to people? It's like you actually care because you do. So you're caring about people when you listen to them and you're showing you're an empathetic, emotionally intelligent person. It's not a game. It's not an act. I don't go, oh, they said this. Logically, my face should smile 45 degrees or frown or whatever. No, it's just you, you listen to them. And you care and it happens. But the outward behavioralistic attitude of this is this person understands how you feel. They're emotionally intelligent. And when you would ask me what's wrong, I have no idea. It's coming from FI. It's totally unconscious. And I want the, all these parents, you know, as I'm growing up, 
to not feel bad or or worry or anything. And if I don't say anything's wrong, it always just makes it more, more, more worse. Like really bad levels worse. So I have to find something to say to make them happy. Now we're in my ego. I'm using introverted thinking as my subjective judging function to try and like figure out logically. Effie told me, Effie told me by their face, the way they said what's wrong, the attitude of that whole thing, the voice, all of it. Like it's got to be this bad. Find something you could tell them that's hopefully not a lie. That's literally as bad as equal as like the face shows they're concerned. <laughs> right? And then that will make them not feel bad. Because you can't tell them, I have no idea. That doesn't work when you're seen as like a very emotionally intelligent person. It doesn't get to fly to do that, ever. So beyond that sort of a situation with it, in a lot of cases with equals, for example, it would turn into something, there's always a dark twist with it. I could see a lot of people that weren't like me with a parent or, a, you know, anyone's parent saying what's wrong. They'd be like, nothing. And they get kind of what? They get kind of passive aggressive seeming because it's like they should know how they feel. They should understand how they feel. I want access to their feelings. So I asked them and they should give it to me. And they didn't. And they were rude. So they're passive aggressive. I was just trying to care about them and they didn't share. Passive aggressive. Right? That tinge follows this push for an ISFJ easily. I bet a lot of types get like a passive aggressive combination somewhere in them. I have friends that want to do something that's like, they don't realize it's wrong, but my unconscious does. And I look uncomfortable, like emotionally uncomfortable. Now, I don't know why I'm uncomfortable. If I'm lucky, my friend would then look at me, make a judgment of just don't do it, and then end it there. But if I'm not lucky, my friend would try to figure out why I'm uncomfortable, which I don't know. Like, it, it might be something very obvious in the modern world. As I grow, I could probably approximate most of these issues with the functions of my ego. Because you grow and improve. But at the time, I couldn't. And then they'll guess. And they'll tell me their guess in some cases. And I won't say anything because I don't want to, like, do anything. It's like if there was a girl who's going to get hurt and I, I was uncomfortable about that, they, they might guess that I like her. And I know how that goes. If you try to say that you don't without FI, especially if you get passive aggressive or something, guess what? <laughs> you like her. They know now. They, they're sure of it. If you say nothing, they're sure of it. If you say something, they're sure of it. So it's a lost cause if they decide that. I can't convince anyone that their feeling of my feeling is wrong because I don't even know fully what my feeling is to bring it up at this point to defend myself. And I never will, really. I just got better at kind of using other functions to approximate in a way that society accepts. We all did. You did too. Live with it. But then the, maybe like they think the girl likes me or I like the girl and then they get her to come over. They, they act like a pal, do all the work to get that set up. And I'm the same way again. And they tried so hard. It's very easy to blame a person not really aware of their feelings in that way of being passive aggressive. Super easy. Because the judgment is never given. And then you have to get the judgment. And we always assume that everyone has everything. This is why it's so great to realize this. Don't assume they have access to it in some kind of a conscious way. They're pushed by it. It's a part of who they are. It matters what they're seeing. You should respect uh, the discomfort in some way if you can. If they can't say it, realize there's something in them that doesn't like something and they can't talk about it. Don't, don't guess at them. Whatever it is, don't make it a guessing game, a fun time, pokey guessing game. They're already being poked by themselves in their unconscious mind. Don't, don't, don't. Just let it be. They don't know how to say what it is. 
and and don't play it like they know when they're hiding it from you. Because a lot of the time they're not. I bet if you look at your past, you're about the same way. And you've been prodded and forced into that space too. So what about SE and FE? The, the sensing and feeling ones are the most emotionally tangled up things here. <laughs> they're, they're the worst in this space. So the SE has a perception it doesn't like and it pokes FE. What do you think Effie does? Do you, do you like just making judgments about things that don't have a perception that's very clear? Or, or just randomly just guess with your SI and Effie and like guess at things around you that seem out of place to SI standards? You know, like this is out of place. How does this feel? You look stupid. No one wants to look stupid and we're all very self-defensive and worried about how we appear to other people and so on. So what you do then is you get sarcastic. Like if someone does something wrong or and you knew it was wrong in in some way or or whatever, you go like, good job. Oh, good job. That's that's good. That's a job and it's good. You did a good job. That's good. The job you did. That's good. I can perceive you, but I don't know exactly what it was in a way that I can fully put it on the table and we can talk about what it was and what my actual judgment of it is. I'm just making a judgment with no given perception. You know, I'm finding something, if anything happened at all, I can reach for good job and just go with it. And now, I'm I'm prickly now too, you know, I porcupined up and you know not to mess with my sarcastic attitude that I copped right now. You don't know, you know not to ask. But if you did ask, well, good job about what? You don't know? Maybe figure it out, you know? And it's like, we're pretending I consciously knew. We're pretending all this stuff. But in many of these cases, I didn't. I've seen many very intelligent people. I've seen people of all ages, of, of, of all intelligences you can imagine. They're doing this kind of a thing in whatever way they're doing it. The grown-ups, they're more polite about it. And they'll get to a point they literally, the most polite ones I know, they literally just can't say the part they don't have conscious. And... And what they do in life is they like avoid that. You know, life becomes a game. First, you try to emulate it and, and, you know, get your way through there. And then when you realize how many millions of ways it can go wrong, you avoid that. But what if we lived in a world where we could recognize how this works out? And you don't have to feel like you're, you're broken or something just because you don't have a part of yourself consciously available you do have it it pushes you right from the unconscious you can figure it out to some degree and do stuff that's great but you don't have a conscious intuition i find from the unconscious generally pushes for me ti to rethink things over and over and over and over and over so until it finally hits the nail on the head by ni standards i'm not even going to talk about te and any you get the general idea you could draw it out yourself Look at what the cognitive functions care about and what they focus on. You know, the, the values and the concerns and the scoping and the spacing of their information elements. What qualifies as those? What fits into those and how it does? And then you can try and approximate like what your shadow is doing. And you know it's pushing when some part of you goes like a dark twist, like sarcasm, like passive aggressive, like in TI's case with NI, it's like an overthinking with TE and NE, it's definitely an over-explaining. Why are you overthinking? It's because you're trying to, to get to the point where you, you're playing a guessing game with like, okay, NI sees there's a problem and this isn't right, so I'll think it again a different way. Oh, that's wrong too. I'll think it again. You don't know what the perception is that you're thinking about or the way it's perceived until NI stops pushing you. And with TE... You don't know when it's explained with any being pushed until TE stops pushing any. And usually instead with, with the one-dimensional one, the lower dimensions, it just gets worse. For me with TE and any, it stops when people get mad and leave <laughs> or, or just say something to interrupt me. I hate that. I hate all of that whole space of thing of that. But that's kind of what happens. Um, what else to say here? 
And so Sionix talks about ISFJ, ISFP, same thing. Basically, both have four-dimensional FI and SI. And it's like, oh, my God. No, 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 no. Just read Dumas. Realize that's an ISFP dealing with FI, then SE. And, and fix some things like that. <laughs> so you have a cohesive system. Or exclude the elements that do that stuff. And, and go by, like, the actual typings. I don't mean to be rude to Sionix. I love you guys. But there's a problem there that you don't want to quite put in the right place. Maybe if you studied your shadow correctly, you could figure it out. 